Good morning. <clears throat> Paul makes an appeal to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 and 28. And what he's saying here, therefore anyone who eats the bread and, or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. A man has to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. What he's stating here is, we need to make adjustments to our posture and our position in Christ Jesus before we come to the table. Otherwise, it's just a religious activity that we're engaging in. So we need to be careful as we partake of these emblems because they really tell us something about the cross. Now, many, many of us use, utilize the sign of the cross for different reasons. I've seen sportsmen make the sign of the cross. I've seen uh, people at the graveside make the sign of the cross. Some people pray to it, some people analyze it. But until you leave something at the cross, you have not really embraced the cross in itself. That's the essence of the Lord's table and the cross that the Lord carried. Let's start with some bad moments. You need to leave them at the cross as you partake of these emblems. Your selfish moments, those white lies, give them to God. Every flop, every failure. Why? Because God knows that you cannot live with them. Romans chapter 11 verse 27 tells us, this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. I want you to understand this morning, God does more than forgive us. He removes the sin from us. He takes the sin unto himself. So while you're at the cross, give God those bad moments. When you lose your temper, very common, when you lose your temper, when you take revenge, and when you retaliate. Have you heard about a man who was bitten by a dog? When he learned that the dog had rabies, he went over to the doctor. And then he started making a list, and the doctor said to him, there's no need for you to make out your wool, because rabies is curable. The man replied, I'm not making out a wool, I'm making out a list of people I want to bite. <laughs> and we so often do that, eh? We come here religiously, partake of the Lord's table, but we do not forgive, we don't forget. We don't overcome. We make such a list. When friends are not friendly anymore, when teachers are not always patient, when parents are not understanding, when work colleagues don't cooperate, we retaliate without kingdom ethics. God wants to keep your list. He inspired one of his servants to write, love does not keep records of wrong. At the cross, God did not keep any list of your wrongs and mine. In Colossians 3, verse 13, the Bible tells us, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. As we rem uh, observe the emblems, remember, God blots out our transgressions. He washes us thoroughly from our iniquity. He cleanses us from our sin. He delivers out us from rebellion into obedience he redeems us from slavery into liberty. God gives us access into the throne room of grace. And I like this, it turns your mourning into dancing. So let us live a life of victory that God has designed for each one of us to enjoy. Because Herod could not silence the blood. Pilate couldn't silence the blood. The Roman soldiers could not silence the blood. Religious authorities and the temple police could not silence the blood. Most of all, Judas couldn't silence the blood. So as we come around the table, let us listen because the emblems still speak. Let us pray.
Father, we are truly thankful for the power of the cross and the victory of the empty tomb. We thank you, God, that we are made we are made white as snow in your presence. We thank you, God, that we are cleansed from our sins. Help us, God, not to live in the sins, but to come to your throne room of grace. And Father, we thank you, God, give us insight into the power of the cross and the victory of the empty tomb. Help us, God, not to retaliate. Help us to forgive as you forgave. In Jesus' wonderful name, we give thanks as we all together would say, Amen.